to Dr. Byers giving us an update on where we are on the public health crisis that is before us, and also uh, Director Michelle on our emergency management response. I want to remind my fellow Mississippians that we are still in the heat of this battle. We are still in the fight. What you're going to hear later is that we did not have as many cases today as we had yesterday, but we had nearly the same number of deaths. This is not good news. The fact is that we are in the middle of a very challenging time in our state. It is time for us to work together to do more good for our fellow Mississippians. It is time for you and me and every other single Mississippian to realize and recognize that this is real. This virus is deadly. It is particularly deadly amongst those that are older and those who have compromised immune systems and those who have pre-existing conditions. But it is also has transmission rates where it is it can be spread by those who never even know they're spreading it, by those who quite frankly never even know that you have it. So I am strongly encouraging everyone to continue to do all you can to stay at home when you can. Please, when you go to the grocery store, do not take the whole family. Try to find ways to get an older sibling to babysit a younger sibling, to get someone to stay with grandmom or granddad. But we have got to continue to fight this fight. We've got to continue to step up and do even more. And trust me, I know you're tired of it. You're ready to be done with it. I'm ready to be done with it. But the fact is, it's not time for us to go back to a full normalcy. We are going to reopen more of our economy because we know we cannot keep all of this up forever. We cannot allow the curse to be worse than the disease. 200,000 Mississippians out of work. 200,000 Mississippians, because of the CARES Act, able to be paid unemployment compensation. 200,000 Mississippians that would much rather be at work today than to be unemployed. Small business owners are hurting. Many small businesses may not reopen. We're already beginning to hear reports of small restaurants not able to open their doors because of this virus. My friends, we have a public health crisis in this state. We also have an economic crisis in this state. We will be pushing back the tax deadline to July 15th to match the federal reports. We did see April revenues, and April revenues came in at a level that was significantly less than expectations, but a large amount of that reduction was in individual income and corporate income taxes. They, had, they are typically due in April. They had already been delayed until May. They are now further delayed to meet federal guidelines to July the 15th. As I have said many times, you are the most powerful weapon against this virus. You are the one that can keep yourself from spreading it by wearing a mask. You are the one that can keep our elderly and those most endangered by this disease from getting it by doing the right things. Let's be smart. I want to be clear. I have been receiving a ton of questions about churches. None of our orders directly affects churches. My view is that in our country, the government cannot close churches. But we continue to ask our pastors to be smart and to be safe. 
I know that every single one of you care about your flock. But there's not going to be some announcement coming which says church services can resume. I don't have the authority to shut them down. Therefore, I don't have the authority to reopen them. Mississippi is not China, but we have to continue to be vigilant in attacking this virus. I want to point something out today that I think is incredibly important. This week is Corrections Officer Appreciation Week. I want to personally thank our corrections officers for the work that they are doing. They have been doing an incredible job, an incredible job under extremely challenging circumstances. We are all aware of the crisis that we inherited, and I can't tell you how many people at the department have stepped up. Our corrections officers are all wearing masks, as well as the inmates, and they're doing extra work to sanitize. Those masks, by the way, were delivered to the Department of Corrections by our emergency management agency, who stepped up, found the necessary PPE to get it not only to our Tier 1 facilities, not only to our hospitals, not only to our nursing homes, but also to our prison system. We said from the beginning, we were going to do everything we can to stop an outbreak in our prisons, and so far, that's what we've done. Now, it did not get a lot of press at the time, and admittedly, we've been dealing with a lot of other things. But I want you all to know that we have been able to raise the pay of corrections officers in Mississippi. They got a minimum of 5%, and some got 9%. They got a minimum of $1,500 a year, and some got twice that, all without a budget increase from the legislature. We are not, and we will not, allow excuses to get in the way of doing our job. I'm proud of them. I'm grateful for them. I appreciate them. And I know the challenging circumstances under which they are currently working. If you are a corrections officer in our state, I want you to know that we support you. And when I say we, I mean every single Mississippian. Thank you for your service to our state. With that, I would like to turn over the floor to Dr. Byers, who is going to give us an update on our public health crisis. Dr. Byers. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon, everybody. So um, today we are reporting 217 or new reports of, of 217 cases and 32 deaths. Um, as we've explained over the last couple of days uh, when we've reported these deaths, um, several of the deaths are from uh, death certificate reviews, um, and these are deaths that have occurred previously but have been identified as we review those death certificates, which is an important part of our surveillance ongoing and moving forward. Um, in Mississippi, it's, it's an indication with the 200 cases that we've reported and the continuing, continuation of deaths we're seeing that we are still in this. And we are um, uh, still seeing um, cases. Uh, but if you look at a couple of indicators, I think that um, um, they're still positive. If you look at the number of hospitalizations for those individuals who have COVID, uh, those are staying stable. If you look at the ICU uh, um, for, for COVID patients, those are remaining stable. If you look at the individuals who have COVID who are on ventilators, that's remaining stable. Um, we've tested more than 80,000 tests in Mississippi now. Um, those tests will continue to find cases, and that's a cornerstone of what we want to continue to do moving forward. It's important for us to identify those cases, 
to make sure that they're isolated appropriately to prevent transmission and make sure that we identify those contacts so we can quarantine them and prevent further transmission down the road. So these are cornerstones of what we've been doing from the very beginning. We're gonna to continue to do this. But it's an also an illustration that we all need to continue to do our part. Um, and we know that there are some things that we can do to prevent us from transmitting it to the most vulnerable in our population. Um, when you wear a mask, and there's lots of folks in the room wearing a mask, I walked in the room wearing a mask today, the importance of that mask is if I'm infected, that cuts down my chances of giving it to you. And that's where we take that responsibility because for many of us who are young and healthy, I'm not really young, young, but for many of us, um, it's a relatively mild infection that folks recover from without any long-term problems, without requiring hospitalization, um, without deaths. But we can serve as a source of transmission for those vulnerable people that we come in contact with every day. So we still need to all be doing those measures that we know are the right things to do to protect the people around us. Wear a mask, avoid those large ga gatherings. Um, even when you're in a group of folks and you're wearing a mask, remember that that six feet between you is still important. Uh, that can reduce the risk of transmission. And uh, you know, do those old fashioned things that we've talked about for years and years and years around infectious diseases, cover your coughs, you know, wash your hands, use hand sanitizer. These are all the things that, regardless of where we are with the numbers of cases we're reporting today, that we need to continue to have in place because we all want to take that responsibility to protect those folks around us. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Dr. Byers. Director Michelle is going to give us an update. Um, from our emergency management perspective. Thank you, Governor. Um, just to give you another a PPE update, uh, we have shipped today was our uh, point of distribution pods that went out to our Tier 3 facilities. That's the 82 counties, the Mississippi Band of Choctaw Indians. In addition to the Tier 3 uh, shipments, we did have two uh, Tier 1 shipments that we pushed out today, one in Monroe County and one in Neshoba County. Um, and just, it's just important to note that we uh, will continue to push PPE out as long as this continues to be an issue and PPE is needed in those facilities. And just to point out, we mentioned yesterday about the fine work that the men and women of the Mississippi National Guard have been doing getting this out. Um, as of the last 26 days, they have logged over 52,000 miles, 52,000 miles over the last 26 days pushing PPE out to these facilities and getting it where it needs to be. So just very thankful for their level of teamwork and commitment in working with us through this process. Uh, just an update on uh, decorations. Uh, no major changes with what I briefed yesterday with regard to our uh, federal decorations that we've got. I would, however, like to mention uh, one talking point that was pushed out today and a reminder under the Public Assistance Disaster Grants, uh, houses of worship and nonprofits may now be eligible for public assistance in some cases. Uh, you can go and apply for these uh, as an applicant uh, at the FEMA website at www.grantee.fema.gov uh, and apply for any type of disaster assistance that you may be available for if you fit into those categories. Um, again, as a reminder, this is Hurricane Preparedness Week. Uh, the talking point for today is to remind everyone to make sure that you're checking and updating the, your insurance coverage depending on where you are. Uh, flood insurance um, may be applicable, as well as additional home insurance that you've got. So just make sure that that is up to date going into the hurricane season. Uh, we will be having a hurricane roundtable with all the 82 counties and Mississippi Band of Choctaw Indians this weekend on Saturday to discuss uh, final preparations and operating and responding to hurricanes in a pandemic environment. And uh, just in a matter of our continued level of preparedness. Uh, Governor, that uh, continues my update for today. Thank you uh, very much. I just want to um, add that we have been able to work with Commissioner Gibson and distribute uh, PPE to a number of our um, meat processing facilities throughout the state. Uh, obviously, the President has made that a priority to ensure that these do not shut down. Uh, we have worked hard as a country, President Trump leading the way, to ensure 
that those facilities can remain open so that we can continue to uh, provide the necessary meat uh, through the supply chain to grocery stores so that the Americans can continue to get it. Uh, we are going to do everything in our power to make sure that that continues in our state. We know we have some challenges and we're going to do everything in our power to make sure that we meet the needs and meet the demands of Americans when it comes to ensuring that food gets to where it needs to get. The other thing I will say regarding Director Michelle is that we have been in constant contact. Uh, the, the fact is that hurricane season is upon us. Uh, we know that this could very well be um, not surprising to anyone who's paid attention in 2020. This very well could be one of the worst hurricane seasons that Mississippi has seen in a number of years. And I want you to know that your emergency management agency is ready. We are prepared. We know that we're going to have to change protocol a little bit when it comes to shelters, for instance. We've got to make sure in this COVID environment that we have shelters where we can do everything we can to try to ensure social distancing, where we can try to have masks available for those that are in shelters. Uh, again, this is a, a world in which we've never lived, but one in which your team here in the state of Mississippi is working to ensure that we are prepared and that you are prepared in the event a hurricane hits in 2020. Questions? Yes, sir. Thank you, Governor. I'd like to go back, if I may, to uh, your update with working with Commissioner Andy Gibson with, with uh, meat plants. I spoke with the family of a USDA member at a PICO plant in northern uh, Scott County, who unfortunately, they claim, uh, lost his life from COVID-19. Can you elaborate what updates can you give on, on fighting out the virus at these plants and how much PPE are we talking about from Commissioner Andy Gibson to, to what plants? Yes. Um, let me first say, I, I don't know uh, who it was that you spoke with, uh, but I want you to know that my heart goes out to that family. Uh, the number of deaths that are piling up in Mississippi is really, um, really challenging. Um, and our heart goes out to the family. Um, our heart goes out uh, to uh, all of the people in Scott County. And I just want to say that to um, Representative Tom Miles, who lost his mom recently, um, we've been praying for him. I personally called him, have not reached him yet, but I did want to tell you that um, Scott County is certainly an area that has uh, seen a large number of cases. And while um, Dr. Dobbs has said repeatedly over the last several days uh, that they had not seen um, confirmation of transmission within the facility, there has no doubt been lots of transmission amongst individuals who work in the facility. Um, and so. Um, what I want to uh, simply say is I'll let, I, I don't know the exact numbers as, as to exactly how much was sent. I just know that uh, Commissioner Gibson and his team have been delivering. Uh, do you have any specifics on that, Director Michelle? Yes, sir, Governor. So to your point about the quantities that were delivered yesterday, there were two types of PPE that went out. There were community masks, which are basically your, your surgical non-medical grade masks, and then we also sent them a variant of the N95, which is a KN95, which is a, it's a wraparound mask, something similar that you would use in your, in your uh, yard if you were weed eating. Uh, 50,000 of each of those went out yesterday, and that was uh, distributed out to your fish and poultry plants yesterday. And then today, and I don't have the quantities that went out today yet, but the quantities that went out today went to the beef and pork plants that went out today, and there's gonna be a similar variety of that. One thing I'd like to point out about those types of PPE, that PPE is not, has not dug into the tier one level PPE that we're pushing out for healthcare where it's a different type of PPE, it's a certain type of medical grade. And we have been able to here in the most recent beer to start getting more of the medical grade uh, uh, PPE requirements. So that is being relegated for them only. So this is the uh, type of PPE that went to those facilities. 